Welcome to What's Good in Your Neighborhood. I'm Lauren Nicole, and today I get the pleasure of speaking with a gentleman from El Paso County Search and Rescue, John Knoll, Chris Valentine. Welcome in. Hey, thanks for having us. Thanks for having hey, us. thanks for being here, coming to save the day, rescuing me from being locked in rooms, whatever's happening on set, we don't know. But um, maybe our, our viewers and folks at home want to learn more about El Paso County Search and Rescue. Can you tell us what you are and what you do? Sure. Uh, just to start off briefly, uh, we're a group of volunteers. We're a nonprofit organization here in Colorado Springs in El Paso County, about 70 of us. And we respond to help folks who are lost or maybe sick or injured out in the wilderness. Yes, but as we learned, as I locked myself in the break room, you have to have a phone to call for help to get out, right? That's right. We're talking about that in a little while, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Essentials. That's right. So um, folks, essentially, they get out there in the wilderness, mm -hmm. in the great great outdoors, doing all the adventuring things as we love to do here in this beautiful city, um, and maybe get into a pickle. They call 911 and they call upon you two. You lace up your boots, you run out there. Tell me about what that process looks like, like from beginning to end, what happens? Well, this, the, the simple process is you call 911. It goes into a dispatch center. The dispatch center has uh, areas specified for each one of the, the uh, fire departments and for search and rescue. Our main response area is everything west of uh, the city limits all the way up to the El Paso County line, which is basically the summit of Pikes Peak. Okay. So that call comes in, um, they take some information from you, and then they dispatch us, give us the basics, and then typically we're going to call you to get some more information and based upon whether we can kind of talk you out of the situation on the phone, then uh, We'll do that. Otherwise, we're going to go ahead and launch the team and uh, we'll get people headed your direction and bring you out. Okay, so does every county have their own search and rescue or is this something special that we have? No, every within the state of Colorado, every county sheriff is uh, required to have a search and rescue group. Okay. So uh, basically every county has their own dedicated search and rescue team. And you all are just a, a bunch of volunteers with good hearts or maybe something, I don't know, what got you into this work in the first place? What do you think, Chris, will you said you've been in for a year and a half, you've been with Search I've been on the team about, about a year and a half now. So what were you I, doing before? Um, so I volunteer other places before okay. that, but I got to the point in my life, my kids are grown now and I had the extra time because um, as John said, uh, the, we're on call 24 seven. So uh, the call can come in at any time. So I've been sitting down to dinner with my family and uh, the page goes out to, to come and, and help somebody else. is it just to else. show up if, if you're able? If, if you're able to, to go, you, you, that's why we have so many of us because not everybody can come all the time. Yeah, uh, that makes can sense. Leave work or you know, leave the family at different times. But uh, yeah, so a group of us will, will leave our family and go and um, do what we can to, to help somebody. Did you work in outdoors previously, or is this like? You know, most of the most of the team have a, have a passion for the outdoors. You know, okay. everybody from you know folks who like to, to hike and uh, to people who ski and out, outdoorsmen, camping, that kind of thing. So most people enjoy the outdoors from one way or another when they join the team. That's kind mm -hmm. of the foundation that we all bring. Yeah, but, but our, our group doesn't have any paid staff. Okay. So it's all volunteer, and so we do this as you know just because it's fun, and we enjoy it. But uh, you'll have a different sense of fun. That's some yeah, type two fun over there. The but the team itself, the members of the team uh, are all they all have jobs, mm -hmm. and that's okay. one of the strengths of our group is uh, we have a pretty wide uh, variety of backgrounds. So we'll have we have IT guys, we have engineers, we have mechanics uh, that do those as their primary job, and then come volunteer. But they bring that skill set with them. Um, to the search and rescue group. So. Yeah, that's really nice that you get all the different skill sets Absolutely. there. Did you guys have to do like a special training course or something to be able to do this? Yeah, we have, a, well, Chris can speak to this, but it's an 11, 11 week training program uh, in order to get into the team in the first place. Yeah, it's 104 hours, uh, actually. And that's pretty so intense. You, you spend over about a five month period there. And it's in the classroom as well as in the field, uh, okay. training, learning, all the foundational things. And I say, I've been on the team about a year and a half, but I still feel like a new guy. There's so much to learn, so much to, to grow and progress into. So. And I'm sure you see all different kinds of things. Like one of the things we have out here today, we're, we're gonna talk about in a minute is like preparedness and how to make sure you don't get into crisis. Yeah. But John, I'm wondering if you have a story of, for me of either like, what's the most common thing that you tend to see here, here in our El Paso County? Well, we've actually run statistics on this. Uh, the bulk of the calls that we get, um, almost between 40 and 50% in a given year are lower bar trail and incline. Oh, wow. And the bulk of those come in the summertime when the tourist season is here. So you get people that come from Texas or from Kansas or from Illinois, 
and they come from sea level to Colorado yeah. Springs, which is 6,500 feet roughly. The first thing they want to do is go to the mountains and climb to do the incline or go up to the summit of Pikes Peak. Um, and there's some acclimatation issues and they, they just run into problems. A yeah. lot of it, a lot, because of the popularity of the incline, a lot of them are on the incline. That makes sense because yeah. a lot of our traffic and our tourists go there. So you're probably most likely to see that. Is there a certain like, aside from that people are coming from sea level and maybe not prepared, a certain demographic that tends to be less prepared? Mm, or kind of runs the gamut? It's a pretty wide variety of people that get in trouble, you know, because you never, you never know. What I feel like I'm just being nosy. I'm like, so. <laughs> well, you're, uh, you never know who's going to be impacted by the altitude. It can be, you know, the super fit 20 year old right. male or it can be the 75 year old woman. Yeah. Who's, or, you know, so it's specific to, you know, the individual. Yeah. So in the last year and a half, mm -hmm. have you seen anything that you were like, oh, well, that's like the most challenging thing that you've seen so far, maybe? Uh, my favorite mission, we had a hiker who brought their dog with them uh -huh. and the dog had trouble coming down. So we actually oh. put a team together mm -hmm. and went up to bar camp and helped uh, bring the, the, the person's dog back down. To you have to finish so, this. And when they made a full recovery, the dog, the dog, the dog, the dog made a full recovery. Too. So yeah, they just, it's, it's this is hard for us to hike up Pikes Peak. It's hard for the yeah. dogs as well who may not have the, the training they, they I always see those little working. ones out there with the little bitty legs. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't I don't know how you're asking this dog to make it up that yeah, mountain. Yeah. So our mission is to help people, but occasionally, you know, we'll be called and offer to come help yeah. a canine because we love, we love dogs as well. We have a full canine yeah. team. We have about 10 uh, trained canines no uh, uh, search, search dogs on our okay. team as well. So, so we love dogs. And they're always, love, always a rescue base. There's always a dog there. Yeah. <laughs> It's a Colorado Colorado requirement. You have to love dogs, that, and I think Subarus. That's, that's the rule. Well, we, we love the dog team because they're very effective yeah. in finding people, number one, but uh, people love them. So yeah. when we have fundraising events, mm -hmm. when we bring dogs, it, it's uh, super popular to bring. Oh, that's yeah. fun. Bring okay, so puppies. you guys do fundraising too. Tell me what we're fundraising for and um, maybe like a little more around how people can get involved in that area too. Sure. Um, we. We receive no money from governmental agencies necessarily. We don't. Oh, wow. We, so everything that we, uh, the, all the money we raise that we put toward operations of the team, vehicle repair, gas, taxes, or not taxes, but insurance, mm -hmm. those kinds of things, uh, is all raised. So we do fundraising events. We just had our annual golf tournament, which was a big success. Uh, we have a really close relationship with the Colorado Springs running community. So we'll get donations from the Pikes Peak Ascent Marathon, uh, the Pikes Peak Challenge, those types of groups. Uh, so we raise a lot of money from that, but we are always looking for uh, donations uh, just from the general public. Yeah, you, you guys, I'm sure, have to have like, A, a lot of gear. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can only imagine. We've got how many different things? We've got hiking, we've got biking. Mm -hmm. Do we see like sledding stuff out in the wilderness? I don't even know. Ice? We've rescued skiers. Uh, we've been yeah. skiing on the peak. Um, we've, we've had skiers been injured up there. Alpine so. climbers. Alpine climbers, yes. Not smart to me, yep. but. Well, anybody they recreating it, outside. Right? Yeah. If they're outside and they're outside of the city limits. That's okay. Well, that's a lot of gear. I'm sure you've got to keep up with and maintain. Yep. Yep. Um, let's talk about what it takes to get prepared to go into the wilderness if we can, because mm -hmm. I know I certainly have been one of those people that sets out on a hike and it seems easy. And then you get up there and you're like, well, that's not so easy. I wish I had been more prepared. But you guys have a list yep. even for us to prepare ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what's on the list. Sure. What do we have? Yeah. We call it the 10 essentials. Okay. And it's the 10 essential things you should bring with you when you go out of the end of the, of the woods. Even if you're just planning that, that one hour hike, you know, or whatever, it's always um, good to plan. What if I'm out longer? Um, mm -hmm. And that's everybody goes, oh, I'll be fine. I'll be back in an hour. I just mm -hmm. need to bring one little bottle of water. Well, as soon as you twist your ankle or, you know, the weather comes in or something like that, and all of a sudden you're out for longer than you, you expected to be, uh, that's when you're going, man, I wish I had some more water. Man, I wish I had a jacket with me. And so that, that's what our advice is to, to prepare a little bit. You know, just some samples here, you know, bring, bring in a little more water than you expect you'll need. Bring an extra layer. There's a jacket in that, in that yellow thing uh, there. Bring some extra food. You know, we got some applesauce. There's some snacks there to drop in your pack. It doesn't be a lot, a, a, yeah. a small bag, a small bag. Back. Uh, first aid kit. My first aid kit's a little bigger, but some people, you know, just a small what first aid kit. Um, so, 
we tell people put in your first aid kit things you know how to use. Um, don't you don't need to pack you know a, a whole bunch of medical gear if you don't know how to, to use it. But okay. you know band aids, you know things if you, if you cut yourself or, or something like that uh, that you're planning for. So uh, just a simple first aid kit that most people have in their car and in their, in their back. All right. I feel like most of those things I have, I just tend to forget them, right? Yeah. So I ended up at the top of Worms. Mm -hmm. I checked for the rain. Mm -hmm. It said no. It was a lie, mm -hmm. as we know that happens. Sure. And I was that's like, dang, that's real that's cold rain. <laughs> and it's kind of like over by the burn area, you know? And so you get stuck with no tree cover, no nothing. And you're like, all right, we're just going to power through. But I wish I had brought a jacket that day. Yeah. I don't know. You guys have a big old bag pack sitting yeah. around. Yeah. You just always take the same thing. So we carry enough to be out for 24 hours. Okay. Um, so yeah, because th the same things happen to us. We're going to help somebody in the afternoon and a storm comes in and all of a sudden we find ourselves we're out all night long. So we, okay. we bring enough uh, stuff to take care of ourselves for, tw for 24 hours. It's and a little bit fun. extra and to, a, you know, to provide to whoever yep. the subject is. So yeah. yeah, a coat for you, extra food, extra water. Well, I like that you guys are out there doing that. Next time, maybe I'll just call you for a coat. <laughs> Will they send you out for that? So some, some of our favorite missions are someone. I'm like, I need a, to get down the mountain. Yeah. I promised my son, but also it's a little chilly. Yeah. Some people, you know, they, they think they're, they're sick or injured. We're able to get there. We're able to warm them up, give them some food, give them some water, and they're able to walk out with us. So that, that's actually a, a successful mission for us as well. How many times a year or a season, let's talk about it seasonally maybe, um, do you guys get calls? Like, is this a rare we thing? Number. We brought our numbers oh, right here. Yeah. Right here. So we Tell me more. Yeah. Statistics. So uh, we 220 calls received, 126 missions. This was last year? 2023. Okay. 5,539 total mission hours, 18,000 volunteer hours. Wow. So out of the group. So, so we, we train a lot. So we got six out of those hours are mission hours, and all the rest are us training that prepare for the missions. Right. How many... Mm, excuse me, how many does it, do you think it takes to, or, or do you typically send mm -hmm. if you get one of the calls and somebody's, you know, rolled an ankle and they need mm -hmm. help getting down a mountain? Yeah, yeah give a bar, bar trail example. Yeah. yeah, bar trail, if, you know, if we have somebody on lower bar trail that, that breaks an ankle, um, typically we'll have about 20 people in the field and it takes about that many to, depending upon subject weight, to get somebody out. Okay. Because um, we'll actually put them into what we call a litter with that has a, a bicycle wheel on it, which helps support some of the weight. Okay. And, um, that makes it a little easier than just carrying someone, but still it requires a lot of people. And uh, so normally 20 is about the number we have out there. I just have like a million questions mm -hmm. now because I'm thinking of all the things that you see when they hit the news and mm -hmm. things that happen and like helicopter rescues. Do you guys ever have to go and do those kinds of things? We do. Uh, so, whose job is it to hang out the side of the helicopter? Yeah, yeah. we don't. It's really the new guy. That. The answer is the new guy, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> we we primarily use the the local air ambulance services. Okay. And so that's uh, we'll we'll do what we call a lift ticket. So if we need to put Chris in as an EMT, we'll put him on board of one of the, of the the air ambulances, and they'll take him in so he can hike up to the subject. Uh, when we start getting those missions that require hoist. Mm -hmm. where it's the guy hanging on the cable at the end of, yeah, we don't do that. I wish we did. Right? Come on, it but would make a great movie. Yeah, I, we could put uh, that in your fundraising video. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> but there are actually specialized assets uh, that uh, are operated by the state of Colorado okay. that we call for those instances. Now I'm down a rabbit trail, of and course, I'm like, yeah. great. Can we, instead of hoisting down, can we hoist up? Like, what if I just want the view? But the trail there is kind of tra challenging, you know. Um, tell, just just think about it. It might make a really good video, okay. you know. Sure. You get the clip from it. I'll look like really tragic. It'll be fine. Get the ride in helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. One of the things you like, even in a helicopter rescue or otherwise, you have to know where people are. So mm -hmm. how are you finding them, and how are we making sure we know where their location is? Yep. Well, we rely very heavily on the actual subject for those. Uh, to provide their location. Um, and we're very heavily in, in the current technological environment uh, relying on cell phones. So uh, one thing we always encourage people to do uh, that's, that are going out into the wilderness is to uh, have a cell phone and know how to use that cell phone. You know, download a compass app, download a mapping program. And if I call you and say, hey, can you give me your location? Um, 
you need to be able to know how to pull that mapping compass up and say, I'm at coordinate XX. And that helps us find your location as opposed to, in essence, doing a search before right. we ever get to. Uh, Is the turnaround the time? Like, it seems like that would take a while. You call in and then they have to, you have to know where you are and then plan how to get there. I always tell people, um, how long did it take you to get to where you're at? Yeah. And it's going to be about that long for us to get there. And that's a surprise to most people because they're very used to urban yeah. response times where you can call 911 and an ambulance shows up at your door in 10 minutes. Yeah, it's not getting up that trail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if uh, typically if you're at the top of the incline, it's going to be an hour and a half to two hours before we can get people to your location. A lot to think about. Yeah. I feel and like the, which is why you need to have that stuff to the stuff keep and the phone battery alive. pack mm -hmm. and all those yep. things. Like for sure. And mine drains so fast when I'm not in coverage. Mm -hmm. So you think it's, you have battery, and then you hike for a bit, and you're like, what happened to my phone? And they always call John with uh, two percent of their battery left. So yeah, yeah. you got to talk fast. So <laughs> secondary battery packs are, are are essential. Yeah, I mean, what do you do in a two percent situation? Do you go turn it off, turn it on, or you just go? We have them turn it off and wait and then, call and then back schedule and say, call me back, turn it on and call back in 30 minutes or okay. an hour or whatever. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Oh, my gosh. OK, um, the list and all the things I assume you have resources on the website. I didn't get a chance to head there first. Yep. People always check our website. You know, there's lots of information out there. They can learn more about the team. If they're interested in joining the team, there's yeah. information out there as well. Are you guys recruiting? That, so. um, every year uh, we, we uh, recruit a new class uh, some years. You know, we may not for one reason or another, but in general, every year they recruit a new class of, of people. Any require requirements and qualifications? There's a pretty extensive interview process. So you have to apply, you have to go through the interview process. It's competitive. Not everybody who applies, you know, makes it on the team. So. That's awesome. And then the, the training program you have to go through and pass that as well. So, yeah, it's not just sign up and, and become a volunteer. I mean, 11 weeks of your time. life is it's, it's quite <laughs> a long time of training, too, to have that kind of availability. Yeah. But, yeah, it's... Mm -hmm. You really get to know the folks uh, on the team. You get to really become family and friends with uh, with everybody on the team. And yeah. You go through a lot together. You know, hike on the mountain, finding folks. It's really well, and after project. they get out of their 11 week training program, then the real world starts. <laughs> yeah, the real world starts. That's, that's because right. then you have the, tra the, the ongoing trainings, you have the missions. But um, you know, as volunteers, we each person is required to be part of a committee. So either a vehicle or equipment or IT or fundraising. Or, whatever the committee is that you choose and there's additional work associated with that so wow we're gonna say search and rescue should be your hobby i mean if you're interested okay. in these types of things and it's your hobby and your okay. passion it's, it's really easy to yeah. dedicate the time and energy to get sure it, so uh, yeah. yeah and we have so many uh you know like i know that we have as a county resources and firefighters have resources everybody yeah. has some things but really when it comes to the wilderness yeah. we're looking at the team thanks y'all well, then we think about the searches. We talked a lot about rescues today, but uh, search is the other part. We don't do quite as many searches as we used to, okay. but um, occasionally there'll be an uh, at-risk individual who is lost, you know, um, you know, from their home or from their yeah. campsite or whatever kind of thing. And we have lots of resources, um, drones, dog teams, lots of things to help find those lost individuals. Oh, well. that makes so, a lot of sense. Okay. So. Um, anything else we should know before we sign off? We're going to send people to the website, which is... Again. If you remember, El Paso County Search and Rescue, okay. epcsar.org. Right? So, I have like, it's so many letters, it's, it's, but it's, it's all, all there. Just remember, El Paso County Search and Rescue, <laughs> put it in your search engine. And you'll, yeah, you'll make it, sure so. that you're prepared, pack your bag with lots of things, yeah. and then whine about how hard it is to get up the mountain, but know that you're safe. Charge your batteries. Charge, Charge your batteries. batteries. That's yes. right, bring some extra water, because dehydration is one of the big ones. So. That's true, that's true. All right, well, thank you both for being with us. Thanks yeah, for telling fun. me more about it and Fun's educating everybody on what Search and Rescue does out there. If you want to get more information or get involved, volunteer, donate to the cause, all those things can be found on the website. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I appreciate it.